guys welcome to a new video and as you can see we are doing a pickups video this is going to be a longer video than my usual ones because i've accumulated a lot of stuff over two to three months and um i was going to do them in a couple of videos but i said you know what let's knock it all out in one so get you guys laced up with what i've currently picked up so first game i want to start with is actually a xeno crisis for the sega genesis now this is made by bitmap bureau and if you like games like uh, Smash TV from back in the day, the top-down, like the twin-stick shooter games, um, this game is definitely right up your alley. But this one is a lot better. You can tell the developers, they, they did a fantastic job putting this game together. I know a lot of people were waiting a long time for it to get released, but it was definitely worth it with this game. I mean, you can tell a lot of heart went into this game. Now, the game will start off a bit tough, you know, because, you know, you just the enemies are coming out at you in swarms. But... Once you get used to it and learn how to use your weapons in certain points, not waste all your ammo because you will be ducking around for ammo, trying to get ammo to fight off more enemies and everything. Just kind of be careful with how you shoot your ammo at the enemies that are coming out at you. But either besides that, the game is a lot of fun. I've made it all the way to the third or fourth level so far. I'm still practicing, trying to get better. I will be talking about it in a future video. I'll probably do a Let's Play, a game, a live video of it, and I'll be probably possibly doing a review on it as well. But the game is actually coming out for... Uh, Nintendo Switch was well, already out for Switch, I think, uh, PS4, uh, but they're going to get physicals from Strictly Limited, Limited, and also um, it's coming out for uh, the Dreamcast and the Neo Geo for you AES fanatics out there, so be on the lookout for this game, it's, it's really on point. Alright, so next game here, a Game Boy Color game in this day and age, this is Tobu Tobu Girl Deluxe. Uh, now, when I saw the cover for this game, it reminded me of Balloon Kid for some reason. Remember the Game Boy version of Balloon Fight? Um, but this game, uh, a girl's, uh, her cat gets kidnapped and she's trying to rescue him. So you, basically it's four stages of you trying to like right, go up to the top. Now the stages uh, range from you being in the clouds, um, in space I think in one, in one of the levels. I can't really remember too much. But anyways, you're trying to like get, keep momentum going of you climbing up, up this tower pretty much to, to get to the top. Um, I barely, I almost got past the first level, but I, I, I lost, I lost momentum, so I'm still getting used to the game, but it is a lot of fun. I would say definitely check it out, and the game has a nice soundtrack to it, and they actually came out with a soundtrack for it. I was I was surprised, there's a soundtrack CD out there for this game, so if you're interested with what you see in this video, pick this game up, I think it's, it's on point. And actually it was published by, a, well, this cut was published by a, a First Press Games, and the developer of this game is Tangram, so... Check them out. I think I believe they're on Twitter. Next game here is uh, Tetris and Card Captain Sakura. If you remember that series, that was one of the last anime Saturday morning cartoons that came on on Fox Fox Kids Network. I think I remember back in the day. This is back in the late '90s. You know, when Saturday morning cartoons were still coming on. And it came on alongside Digimon, Escaflone, and all that good stuff. But the game is pretty much a mixture. I, it, it plays like Tetris, but with a little uh, gimmick to it. Now. I don't remember. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was kind of cool. But if you like Tetris and you want to spin on Tetris, definitely check this game out. I mean, you can't go wrong. I mean, it is Tetris. Everybody loves Tetris, right? All right. So next game here, I have Rampage: Total Destruction for the PS2 and the Wii. Um, I picked this up because I was, GameStop was having their uh, buy. I think it was buy four uh, four games for five dollars uh, for ten bucks. So I was like, man, so I, I found this game, and um, and she said, the lady told me, hey, there's a couple, you get a couple more games for for whatever. I was like, all right, cool. So I got this game, and I'll show you the other games I got with it. But um, I got the Rampage because, mainly because this game has two other games in it, in, in the game, within the game. So basically, you get the original Rampage. You get Rampage, um, was it World Tour? Yeah, World Tour. And um, yeah, and then, of course, the, the main game itself. So you get three games in one. The, the Wii version has an extra video clip of something. I can't remember what, exactly what it was, but if you like the Rampage games, they were pretty fun, especially the original ones. And also, when I picked these games up, my buddy, where is it at? He hooked me up with a Rampage like little mini arcade. Now, you can play this thing, but I wouldn't recommend it. I mean, this yeah, it's more of a novelty than anything, so I put it up on the wall, I guess. It's a ver it's, this is a version of the freaking um, the mobile version of the game uh, because Ralph is in it. I thought it was the Nintendo version at first, but we know Ralph wasn't in the NES version, so this is definitely a uh, part of the mobile version of the game that's out there, if it's still out there. But if you're a Rampage fan, let me know if you like the games, and definitely let me know if you like the movie or not, because I heard some people say it was, it was horrible, but I don't know. 
Next game here is Remothered. If you like survival horror games, you definitely must pick this up. Uh, some of you guys may, may remember last year, I did a, a, a live video of me playing through the game. We did three videos all the way until we beat the game. A lot of fun and some terrifying moments in the game. You know, it takes a lot to get me scared. And this game scared me. I mean, there's one part in the game where you're in this narrow corridor and you know there's something bad on the other side, but you have to go that way. And, whew, I'm, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about that whole situation, but it was pretty terrifying. But basically, you start off the game trying to find out what happened to a girl. And I don't want to go over too much of the story, but this is one of those survival horror games where you're being stalked. So you can't really attack your enemy unless you have defensive items in the game. So, um... Just be aware of that. So if, you, if you're familiar with games like Clock Tower, um, what's the other one I'm thinking about? Uh, Hunting Ground, of course. This game is definitely right up your alley. And, of course, my main system is, is the PS4 version, but I got the Switch version because, you know, portability of the game. So, you know, I like that survival horror game on the go. Uh, next game, if you like uh, Zelda-type games, kind of like the top-down Zelda games, you, know, you can't go wrong with Spark Light. One reason I picked it up because I feel like this game expands on the on the Zelda formula, you know. And when I say expand, I um, mean the game has, to me, it has a, like an in-depth story. Uh, the Zelda games, besides I would say Zelda, the, maybe Zelda 2, uh, in, in my opinion, of course, guys, in my opinion, you know, I'm not saying this is true, but I feel like um, Zelda 2 probably had the best story out of all the Zelda games. And um, after that, I mean, they just kind of like it was generic story, at least in my opinion. I know some people will say so Link to the Past is the best story or whatnot, but anyways, going back to Sparklight, um, I think if you like those old school type Zelda games, you can't go wrong with this one. Uh, awesome game. Happy you got a physical. All right, next game here. We're on the Switch hype train. Uh, this is a hat in time. Now, I was hoping this game was going to come out for PS4 as a physical. The Switch version, just I didn't think that was going to happen, but, you know, it is a physical, so I went ahead and picked it up. I was waiting for this game to get a physical release, so I said, fine, I'll get the Switch version. Um, the game, if you like uh, 3D platformers, like an event, like, like Mario 64 and games like that, this got, this game is a really a big throwback to those games, but this game was 10 times better than any of those games. I had time, there's a lot of charm, good music, funny little story. It's, just, it's, it's very likable to play this game, so um, very likable to play. You guys know what I mean. It's, 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 the game has a lot of charisma, and it's definitely something I feel like a lot of people will will definitely like if they if they if they try it out. So, hat in time, check that one out. Next one, this is the last game I actually got recently. This is Time Spinners for the Switch. Um, I've been watching this game for a while, and I always wanted to try. I was just waiting for it to get a physical release, it's because I remember. Um, uh, Starlink Games did a, a video on it. He did a review about it, and you know I took interest from that video. But of course, I wanted to get a physical, so it finally got a physical. I picked it up at Best Buy. Um, cover art looks okay, um, but uh, I think the limited the limited run, uh, the ones they were selling on their website had better cover art, so I might have to order a different one. But let me know what you think, guys think of the cover art. Um, information about the game: this is a Metroidvania type game where uh, you have to. I think you have to go back in time or something like that in this game. I can't really remember too much, but you guys let me know in the comments because. A lot of these games I haven't got into totally yet to where I, I know a decent amount of the story yet. Uh, Demo, I got lucky and found this one. Um, I've been wanting this one for ever since it came out, but no local stores had it. Uh, all the GameStops that had it, um, they were like pre-orders only. And then the Best Buy it had it was like freaking like 30 miles away from me. So I was like, forget that. So it, it happened to be at a GameStop and I, I took some trade in and got it. So Demo is pretty much like a rhythm game. Where you touch the controls and kind of match things up and everything it's really cool it's a, a cool little story about the little girl and this whatever this guy is but demo it came out on the vita as uh, auto mobile of course that's where it first appeared at but the switch version is the last physical release i know of for this game so let me know what you guys think of demo all right this oh man next game here unholy night um you guys are gonna laugh at me for getting this this is 12 bucks and a Holy Night was a new Super Nintendo game. It was released two years ago. Um, it had a lot of potential, but it didn't live up to it. I'd say the best thing about this game is probably the packaging. It comes with a nice box, manual, and all that good stuff. But other than that, the game just really fell short. It just feels like it's just laggy. It's slow. It's just they didn't obviously the developer didn't know how to develop the game on the system properly. So they probably would have did a better job if they had developed it on the Genesis. It probably would have been better on there, but. They went with the Super Nintendo, and these are for 
former people who developed for Neo Geo, so um, SNK pretty much. So, um, yeah, I don't have too many good things to say about it. It does have a story in it. It does have a couple of characters. So if you get past all that, you, it may be something decent here, but there's just better stuff out there just to let you know. So, Unholy Night. I mean, for 10, 12 bucks, yeah, why not? All right, I got these from uh, Play Asia. Uh, this is a whole new world. I think almost I, I got this from Limited Run as well, but I wanted a Vita version as well. So a whole new world is basically like a Nintendo, like an old school 8-bit Nintendo game, where there's a gimmick where you fall in these holes and then the, and you're like kind of reversed and everything on the ceiling and everything. It's it's really cool actually. So let me know what you think about a whole new world. Um, I haven't heard a lot of people tell like talking about it. My buddy Marcus has it. He said it's actually on Nintendo too. They they made a Nintendo version of it, but I don't know if that, I don't know if he was BSing with me. So you guys let me know if there's an NES version of this game. Ah, here we go. So the game I've been wanting from PlayStation for a while. This is Ghost 1.0. Uh, Ghost 1.0 is a Metroidvania game where you have to go you have to use go inside of a computer and fix these like these errors and everything like that. Um, it really is kind of like um, I want to say like uh, one of those games where. I think that you actually have the you, your soul or something in it. I can't. I don't know. I don't want to go over the story because I haven't played all the way through it yet. So I can't tell you guys. What I can tell you is is that it is a Metroidvania game, and I do like it. So that's why I got it. So and also if you get the Switch version, uh, depending on which version you get, it'll come with Unepic uh, on the system. So uh, you get two games in one, I guess. But Ghost 1.0. You're seeing the footage of it. You know, let me know if you you want to take interest in this game. Oh man, this next game. So these next games, all right. So <laughs> this is probably considered one of the worst PS2 games ever, and that's okay. That's okay. Um, but I had to pick it up because I love the Canadian dialogue for these games. Uh, this is Sniper 2 <laughs> for the PS2. And you know the funny thing about Sniper 2? I don't even think there's a Sniper 1. I looked for the Sniper 1, and there's no there's no Sniper 1. Maybe it came out in Japan and has a different name, but as far as I know, the Sniper 2 is the only one that they came out with. This game, you play as a sniper, and this is like the friendliest sniper I've ever seen in a movie. Like, usually snipers are serious and like ready to take out the target. This guy is like the nicest guy ever. It's pretty hilarious, the dialogue going on around it. Um, a lot of people, have, you've probably seen a lot of people play this game. Like, PewDiePie played it on his channel, and it's, it's just hilarious and hilariously bad. But, Sniper Part 2, uh, let me know what you guys think of it. Um, next game here is if you like Jet Set Radio. Uh, you'll definitely like this game. So this is like a free roam uh, skateboard game. It's called Skate Attack. It only came out in PAL territories, and I took interest in this game because it was made by Renderware, which they developed a lot of PS2 games or helped develop a lot of PS2 games like Air Airblade and all that good stuff. And um, it just the whole style of this game just reminded me of Jet Set Radio. You know, just kind of like these kids that are going around skateboarding. They're not tagging, but they're going around just skateboarding and doing all this crazy stuff and like these stunts and everything. Really good looking game. I'm surprised it didn't get put out in America you know I barely found out about this game uh, but if anybody knows about skate attack let me know what you think I think it's on point a game I've been uh, trying to hunt down for a while but I forgot that I was looking for it, and that is dead the rights uh, retribution now um, dead the rights uh, the first one on the ps2 and Xbox a really good game I mean I don't think I got a lot of recognition because it was exclusive for the Xbox for a while so it didn't come out on the ps2 later which is when I got it um, I, game was great. I, hell, I even thought it was better than Max Payne. The story in this game was like was all over the place. It was it was great. The new one was made by the same people who made a Reservoir Dogs for PS2 and Xbox, and I thought they did a pretty good job on the game. And this this version of the game where you play, play as Jack Slate, um, you play as Shadow, his dog. You, the dog gets more playtime in this version, so um, I, I, it's, it's kind of good and bad. I don't really like the dog that much, but the story is just a re re-imagination uh, of the first game I guess uh, very violent the intro was insane you see a woman get thrown off of a building and just it, it's brutal so definitely um, yeah did the right retribution let me know what you guys think of this one it's like all over the place um, I don't really know what, what else to really say about it you know uh, I, I kind of feel bad because this game was the last game made by the studio um, and they kind of just fell under after it so it, it didn't do too well but I like what they did with it. I think they had a lot of good ideas with it. I'm liking the game so far. You guys let me know what you think of it. Hey, the honey, 
sure you'll be. You're not going to tempt our tummies with a taste of nuts and honey. You bet I am. Honey Nut Cheerios blends crunchy nuts and tasty golden honey. It's going to tempt your tummy with a taste of nuts and honey. It's a honey of an It's Honey Nut Cheerios. It's going to tempt your tummy with a taste of nuts and honey. It's a tasty part of this good, nutritious breakfast. Honey Nut B, she got one honey of it. It's Honey Nut Cheerios. All right, so next up we have here is Tubin for the NES. Um, I had this game a long time ago. I don't know what happened to my copy of it, but I noticed it was missing, so I picked this one up. And Tubin's basically a game where it's, it's simplistic. I mean, you're in a tube, you race down hills, you go through these little obstacles, these little uh, like like little flags or whatever to get points and try not to hit any obstacles on your way down. Um, pretty fun game, but only good to play in like small increments pretty much you know it's not a game you want to sit and play for a long time but it is fun for a little bit and the, uh, the cover art is cool all that guy needs is really a beer in his hand and actually i <laughs> got the the game boy color version as well a lot of people didn't know this one existed so it has like a similar color cover but there you go so tubin nes and game boy color uh next here we have a uh, cruisin Cruising is a part of that four uh, deal game or ten dollar game thing I got with uh, the other game I talked about earlier. Uh, so cruising is pretty much uh, it was called Fast and the Furious in arcades, but anybody the same people made cru the Cruising USA series. But I guess since they had the title for Fast and the Furious, they could make more money on it. Obviously, they couldn't. They lost the rights to the title when they ported it to the, the Wii, so they just called it Cruising. Uh, it's a fun game if you like the Cruising USA series uh, and all that stuff. Uh, this is the I think believe this is the last game they made out of that series. So, uh, pretty fun racing game. Uh, yeah, not really much to say about the Cruising USA games. I mean, they're fun playing at arcades and everything. So, let's see here. Next game I got Spy Games. Spy Games is like a uh, rail shooter game, kind of like uh, in a way Time Crisis in a way. I found this one by chance, and I was like, "Whoa, dude! I didn't know this." Like, I like the arcadey games they have on the Wii and just, just seeing this you know what I did was I I pulled out my phone looked up gameplay of it and I said okay this is something I want to play so spy games if you find that at GameStop goes for three dollars you find it anywhere else probably around the same price it's rounded up a bit jumper was 99 cents I said why the hell not for a dollar uh, you can't go wrong uh, I like the jumper movies um, with, with a jumper movie with Samuel Jackson uh, he was a he was a mean antagonist in that movie but uh, yeah, this is Griffin's story. So he's the other guy. All right, Cursed Mountain. Found this for five dollars at a uh, yeah five dollars at GameStop. Got lucky and found this one. You don't find this one at GameStop too much anymore. So Cursed Mountain, survival horror game where you're looking for your lost brother, if, if I remember correctly, on this mountain, and you climb the mountain and you you enter the city, and the city is like it's like a ghost town pretty much. Like everybody's gone. You're trying to find out what's going on, and Dude, this game is very eerie, especially with the Wii Remote, how it has the sound effects and everything like that. It trips you out. So, Curse Mountain, a solid survival horror game. Me and Jason talked about this years ago, too. I, I think I finally got him to get it a few years back. So, uh, let me know what you guys think about Curse Mountain. Zack and Wiki, a point and click game. They don't make games like this anymore. I'm, I'm glad Capcom actually, actually published this game. The It doesn't say on the back of the cover who originally made this game, but if you like point and click type games, the Wii is definitely the system for those type of games, and of course, possibly the Wii U and everything. Hell, maybe even the Switch, I don't know. But uh, Zack and Wiki, uh, cool puzzle adventure. Uh, definitely check this one out if you like point and click games with a lot of animation. Alien Syndrome. Man, remaking this series, man. Uh, they remade this game for the PSP and the Wii, and I don't think, I don't know if this version came out on any other systems, but this was cheap. Uh, I think it was under $5 at GameStop. 
Um, it's a top-down shooter, and you pretty much are like are fighting an alien. They added a lot of story to this game, so they're mostly like come out like in stills and everything like that. But it's still a compelling adventure. It's definitely worth the price. So let me know what you guys think about Alien Syndrome. Ah, good old Kane and Lynch. Uh, man, me and Marcus beat this game, beat part two a couple years ago. And unfortunately, the first game doesn't have an online story mode. It has some weird multiplayer, um, it has a weird multiplayer online like Fragile Alliance. Uh, but I don't even think it's online anymore for this one. Kane and Lynch deserved a third game, in my opinion. I love the first two games. Uh, I know this game has its problems, but I still loved it. It had one of the coolest scenes. Like, well, here's an example. So if you're playing, you play the game as Kane, and pretty much, and, if, and I think, yeah, you could play two co-op, uh, you could play co-op, like a sit-down co-op, pretty much a couch co-op, but you couldn't play online story co-op. But anyways, if you got incapacitated in this game, your character would fall on the ground, and it would basically, basically you would hear a flash of his memories and his regrets in life, pretty much. Like, Kane wishes he, he, he got to know his daughter better and didn't get divorced from his wife. All these flashbacks and all these conversations in his past come to him. It's like, it's insane. Like, they really did a good job with this game. I know it has its problems, but definitely I could look past them. They were gonna make a movie about this game, but they, I guess that fell off or whatever. There's gonna be uh, Bruce Willis and Jamie Foxx, which I, I can see Bruce Willis, but Jamie Foxx, I guess he would play Slash. I was thinking Billy Bob Thornton, but this was years ago, so I don't know what happened, but whatever. Kane and Lynch, let me know what you guys think. I just got this because I needed another game to get during the deal. Uh, Final Fantasy X and X2. Uh, I played these games uh, back when I was in Korea. Uh, well, the first one when I was in Korea. And I liked it for what it was. It was the first Final Fantasy game to have voice acting in it. And it, it was it was the first Final Fantasy that I realized was pretty linear. So you couldn't just go anywhere you wanted. You had to kind of like just follow a trail. But besides Titus's, uh, or Titus's work, like whiny voice, man, the game was pretty good. And I liked it. Um, not really much more to say about this one. This is probably the last main Final Fantasy game I played, so... Um, but yeah. Alright, now next we have here NBA Jam for the PS3. Uh, I don't know why I didn't pay attention to this game when it first came out. You know, I was a big NBA Jam fan back in the day. I just, I guess just too many years have passed and I just wasn't interested in it at the time. But I recently found this game at one of my friend's shop. Picked it up and it has the same voice actor, uh, Boom Shakalaka. What's his name? Because we had dinner with him, Tim Kritzo, Kritz, Kritzro, uh, Boom Shakalaka. We had dinner with him. It was free, free, hilarious. And he, like, when he ordered hot wings, he was like, Boom Shakalaka. He was like up there on fire. We like, dang, dude, this <laughs> is hilarious hearing him talk. But um, this is at the Game On Expo dinner too, so just to let you guys know. But yeah, NBA Jam. Um, yeah, it's back, and it's kind of back. It's back for me, at least. This is the last game they made, and I don't know how well it did, but EA Sports seems to own the rights to it now because Midway was the original, original owner of it, and we know they dissolved pretty much. So let me know what you guys think about this one, too. It's probably, like, the only sports game I'll play. It's like an arcade one like that. So I talked about this game in my pickups video from PRGE, and I had got the PAL European version, which I thought the game only came out in that, that, uh, in that region. And it was called uh, America's Top Top Most Wanted. But it actually came out in America under a different name, I just found out. Somebody said in the comments that Reggie, their game was released in America under a different name. And it's called Fugitive Hunter, The War on Terror. Now, th this game pretty much came out in the in after the 9-11 attacks and everything. So somebody guessed that they thought they could make a game about going after terrorists. And Osama Bin Laden is the final boss. Just letting you know that, guys. And it, the, game, the way the game plays is hilarious. You pretty much play in first person until you get to a certain point, until you get to the main terrorist. Then you have a fist fight with him and you beat him up and slap him upside the head. It's it's, it's hilarious. Uh, so, Fugitive Hunter, it didn't get a lot of recognition, at least that I know of. You know, I barely found out that it existed, even though I saw a demo of it years ago. But, um, yeah, let me, guys, let me know what you guys think of this one as well. My buddy Kyle hooked me up with this game. This is a Nero Voider. This is a twin stick shooter for the PS4. And um, I'm really getting into twin stick sh shooters. I mean, obviously, uh, like uh, like um, Xeno Crisis, I showed you before, is a twin stick shooter, even though not so much on the uh, on the Genesis because the controls and everything. But twin stick shooters are a lot of fun, and they're they're very, I would say, like you know what you're getting into with these games. So, Kyle, thanks for the hookup with this game, man. Appreciate you. Kyle's always looking out for me. All right, so don't laugh at me with the next game, guys. I I was pretty much going after like all the games that were based on like. Uh, sixth generation to seventh generation that were like 
based off TV series and movies. And next game I got here, <laughs> I picked up Charlie's Angels. Charlie's Angels is a beat em up where you beat people up and just, it's, it's it, I don't want to say it's a horrible game, even though it is, but there is some charm to it. And, you know, I felt, I thought it was funny. I mean, it is a beat em up. So the only sad part about it, it's a one player beat em up. And we know how those turn out. If you remember Final Fight for Super Nintendo, one player beat em ups just don't really, they just don't have, they don't, they, they're missing, they're missing something, obviously, the second player. So, um, yeah, one player. This game should have co-op. It would have got. I think it would have been received slightly better. But it's up to you to, to, to judge that. So yeah, Charlie's Angels. There haven't been really to me. There haven't been like really solid Charlie Angels since like Farrah Fawcett's team. Like Farrah Fawcett, that's the real Charlie's Angels. The ones after that, just in the newer ones, like nah, man. But hey, that's up to for debate, I guess. Uh, if you like games like um, a Left 4 Dead, World War Z. Uh, there's a game that's similar to those, but instead of dealing with zombies, you're dealing with aliens. This is Earthfall Invasion. Uh, so it's a four-player co-op, and I played with my, I played with my, uh, I think I played with Kyle online actually. We played online, got past a couple levels. It's pretty fun. It's a little, it's not as action-packed as the uh, World War Z and freaking, uh, uh, I mean, uh, Left 4 Dead, but um, it is fun, and I, I like it a lot. So you're dealing with aliens. It's not too hard. It's fun. Um, the only thing this game was missing was an intro though man usually you have an intro to kind of get you like invited and what's going on but i guess you just don't have to watch a trailer online to get that part of the story because by the time you play this game the invasion has already happened you're just trying to survive with, with a group of survivors so four player co-op online next up we have here Battlestar galactica oh man so i just recently um Watch the uh, Battlestar Galactica, the new series, and I've been wanting to watch it for years, but I finally got a chance to watch it because it's on Amazon Prime, and I fell in love with it. I mean, I was blown away. I was like, man, this is great. I still haven't seen the movies that they put out for. I'm still waiting for those to be put on Prime or whatever so I can watch those. But man, this series is one of the, a few series I could say from the beginning to the end was great. I know some people hate the third and third season or fourth season or whatever or how it ended, but I thought the series ended great, man. They they couldn't have done a better job. The third season, I will admit, after the first couple episodes, it was more of a filler season, but you need a filler season. You know, character development, other stuff going on. It can't be action-based all the time. But, uh, yeah, uh, Battlestar Galactica, I haven't talked about the game yet. It is a, uh, like, a not a rail shooter, but a 3D shooter, uh, airplane shooter. You're in space fighting Cylons and all that stuff. That's all there is to it. I mean, uh, yeah. All right, you guys are definitely going to laugh at me about the next game here. Friends for PS2. Like I said, I was going for the series of games, uh, and I've never watched the episode of Friends. I never will. Uh, I probably won't ever play this game unless I'm capturing footage for it. It is a trivia game for like when you have to answer questions on the show or whatever. And you watch the show, obviously, you know some of the answers here. So if I played it, I would just guess. But yeah, Friends the video game. Yeah. All right. So next here <laughs> we have. Oh, yeah, I forgot about these ones. Perfect, I'll talk about these. Super Mario Land uh, Color DX Color and Super Mario Land uh, 2 DX. Uh, these are both color versions that people have hacked, and uh, they look great. So if you like the Mario games for the Game Boy, uh, they definitely look a lot better now if you get these. And I'll leave a link in the description where you can pick these up at if you want to pick these games up. Um, I'm more of a fan of Super Mario Land 2. I, that's my probably my favorite Super Mario Brothers game out there. It just something about it I just really liked. And Super Mario Land uh, Color DX. Uh, this one, um, the color version obviously is awesome, but I never really got into that game back in the day. It, it just probably because the way it looked, it was hard to look at on the Game Boy if you look back. But uh, yeah, check them out. Whoa, Deja Vu on the Game Boy Color. I picked this up recently, and I always wanted to try the Deja Vu games. I didn't know there was a part two, uh, so this comes with part two on there. We only got Deja Vu one on the NES, and then part two and, and part two. I think one and part two came out on uh, computers or whatnot like that. But we're trying to keep it to consoles and portable consoles and stuff. So Deja Vu one and two, uh, Mystery Adventures. So if you like mysteries, point click Mystery Adventures, give this one a go. Let's see here. 
so VIP the series you guys remember that back in day I got VIP for the PS2 <laughs> and basically VIP for the PS2 is an upgraded version of the PS1 version it's a lot better um, than the PS1 version the PS1 version they cut a lot of corners and missing voice acting and all that stuff but the PS2 version fixed that now this is pretty much what you would call a um, a quick time event game where you just do quick time button presses to do certain combinations when you're fighting enemies and it's great I like it um, I think it has a lot of charm if you especially if you were a fan of the show back in the day um, this game has what you're looking for I'm surprised it didn't come out for PS2 in America I mean we got the weak PS1 version so I don't know what they were thinking with that but um yeah and then um, also I picked up the Game Boy Color version which is, uh, it's kind of like a bunch of mini games in one. There's a driving part, there's a run and gun part, there's a part where you're like on roller skates, I remember. And just feels like a bunch of mini games in one, but it has a story to it, so. Um, VIP, I have the, I have all of them now, so, yeah. All right. So, got these two items here. I forgot to show this off in my uh, PRG video, and this was a PS1 monitor I got for 10 bucks at the show. Um, the guy said he's selling it for 10 bucks because he didn't know he ha it had some problems with it. And basically, uh, I took a chance. I said maybe it's fixable or whatever. And basically, around the corners here, uh, it's like it's like white out or whatever. So you can only see the screen and really in the middle. So it's like some kind of screen image burning or whatever. So I'm gonna see if it's fixable or not. You know, you guys know I couldn't pass up a, a PS1 monitor for 10 bucks, even if it was broken. And yesterday, I actually got this monitor. This is a PS2 monitor I got from my buddy Ryan at Toy Box. Uh, this one, um, he didn't know if it worked or not because it was traded into him Well, the plug. But I looked at it, I said, Ryan, and most likely it probably works. But he didn't have a slim PS2 to test it out on. So we did a trade, and I paid some cash, got it for 20 bucks, and tested out if it works. And of course, it sucker, it worked. This was the first intact, intact monitor, I believe, that came out for the PS2 Slim. So um, they, ch they changed it up a bit after that because it's kind of heavy. They wanted a more lighter, like uh, like a, a monitor, because this thing is actually heavier than the Slim PS2 itself. So yeah, but anyways, happy to have this. You guys know I love the, the screens. Uh, these things are just very nostalgic to me. All right, we're gonna take another break real fast. This is what you're looking for, isn't it? The gigantic Matilda? Yeah, she's down below, somewhere off this coast. Yes, that's the reason I came here. But I don't know anything about you. Why should I get involved with you? Relax, son. Stick with me and I'll make you a rich man. I know this ocean like the back of my hand. So do you know where the Matilda lies? W well, uh... That's it, I'm finding someone else. Wait, 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 son. I was uh, aboard the Matilda when she went down. I won't fail you. Look, if you change your mind, you can pull out any time. Come on, what do you say? I don't know whether or not you're a diver, but if you're planning to search this vast ocean all on your own, you'd better think again. You'd be far better off hooking up with me. Yes, sir. The Matilda, she was a beauty, all right. Nothing like it before or since. It's too bad. The ship is beautiful as that, rotting away on the bottom of the sea. Okay, Pops, you've got a deal. <laughs> well, your head's screwed on right, son. You won't regret this. You know, lad, in this day and age, a man's got to hang on to his spirit, his companions, and his swimming trunks. <laughs> swimming trunks? Wait a minute. You aren't talking about taking a dive, are you? What did you think? Come on, let's get going. Get going? What? Now? Alright guys, so, um, these games here, um, you know, one of them, well, I was told about a game called Dolphin's Dream a couple months back. And then I found out that that game had got an English release in a PAL territories under the name of Diver's Dream. So I've always been fascinated with freaking deep sea diving and everything, but I've always been like really like nervous about decompression sickness. You know, I've seen 
I remember you guys remember that show A Thousand Ways to Die as an example. Those guys went underwater and then they they came up and I guess they didn't they, they didn't do the right thing or whatever and they went in that plane and they freaking passed out in that plane crash. That's insane. So it's always tripped me out ever since seeing that. So um, anyways, going back to the game, Divers Dream is a game about a guy who they find out about this 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 ship called the Matilda, which I guess has treasure on it or something like that. But you're actually looking for the ship to kind of discover what happened to it and what's on the ship and everything. So pretty cool adventure game, uh, deep sea diving. Um, this is definitely the game that got me interested into like looking into more games like this. Next game here is Treasures of the Deep. Um, I don't really know too much about this game. I've always seen it over the years, but I never pulled the trigger on it. So now I'm going to take an interest in this game. Um, if you guys have any information about this game, let me know. The people I have talked to about it say it's really good, Reggie. Like, you know, check it out and everything. So, uh, let me know what you guys, your opinion is on it. Then we have the Everblue series. Uh, Everblue, uh, published by Capcom, but made by Akira. Uh, and pretty much, it's the first person deep sea diving game where you go underwater and look, look for all kind of stuff. Now, the American, one, well, we only, we only got part two in America. And uh, part one only came out in Japan and PAL Territories, which I got lucky and got this copy here. So, um, yeah, another deep sea diving game. Next up here is the Endless Ocean games for the Wii. These are spiritual successors to the Ever um, Blue game. And, um, yeah, more deep sea diving on the Wii. It probably actually like, fits the Wii controller and everything. But, um, yeah, more of these games here. And these games are on the cheap, so you're not going to break the bank for them or anything. Now we're getting to a little adventure, more adventure here. So this is Abzu. Uh, Jason talked about this game on his channel. He didn't really care for it that much, it seemed. I mean, I think I'm going to like it. It's more of like a, a, I don't know, it's more of a quick adventure game to get into. You know, some beautiful environments and stuff like that. So looking forward to playing this one. Maybe it's easy to get a platinum on this game. You know, with trophies. Well, it doesn't say it has trophies on here, but I don't know. It should, because every game has trophies on it now. And then we got Subnautica. Subnautica is, I believe this is a game where you go to another planet and you go and you dive into the ocean there and there's all kind of like freakish uh, animals there and whatnot and pretty creepy stuff. So looking forward to this game. Um, a lot of people told me about it. My buddy Martin is the one that told me about Martin, if you're watching, thanks for letting me know about this game. Uh, you know what's funny, Martin? I'm probably going to play the game before you have. You've had it for like almost a year now, so I'm going to play my copy. You still got yours on the shelf. <laughs> I'm just playing, man. But thanks for letting me know about it, Martin. I appreciate you, man. And is that all I have? Yeah, this is that we got through the video. Thankfully, I can put this stuff up now. So, and last but not least, too, guys, um, for Black Friday, um, the money I had, I went ahead and spent it on a one up arcade. My buddy had got like got the one up arcades for a wholesale price, and he, he gave me the same uh, opportunity to get one for a wholesale price from him. So, I paid 150 for that Marvel one you see in the corner there. So, I got Marvel superheroes. One up arcade, so pretty happy about that. And uh, Marvel Superheroes is pretty much probably, probably my favorite fighting game out of the Marvel games. Yeah, I love the gem system in that game. So, yeah, yeah, these are definitely the two one up arcades I really wanted like Final Fight and Marvel Superheroes. Now, there is Turtles in Time, but I looked at the Turtles in Time as a four player game. It is that screen is just too small, man. I don't know, they, they got to do some kind of Alter, alteration with it. it just seems way too small for me it's got to be slightly bigger but i don't know check out some reviews maybe some other people like it but if you got four people playing that thing you got to think about like how it's going to be it's, it's going to be really cramped so but anyways guys uh that is all i got for you thanks for watching the video radical reggie and i will see you later